steps. And at this point, we're approximately at 200 feet underneath those uh, mountains. So we are going to Shibalba today. We're going to hell. What's up, Den family? We are doing our Belize tour slash things we did, and this is cave tubing. Our tour guide was really awesome. We learned a lot of information along the way, and it took about an hour to get to this place, but it was really awesome. The scenery and just learning about the culture of Belize. So this is us actually walking to get our equipment. As you can see, we had to get a helmet, the tube, and the life jacket because it is fairly deep in there and it's dark, y'all. I mean, if you even look in that cave right now, people are in there and it's dark. As you walk down, you kind of get some history of why people are going in this cave. And this was like a ritual spot. And they kind of let you see a little more of what's going on. And look at them lights. They, not have, they do not have the lights on for no reason. It is dark. At this point, our tour guide was kind of just giving us some information on what we were going to be doing, kind of telling us that we didn't have to worry about any animals because there's no food in there for them to eat, so there's nothing that would grab you from under. I still was kind of like on the fence about it because once you talk about sacrificing, I'm already like, what am I doing here? That ain't where I'm supposed to be. This ain't no horror movie. But for the most part, everybody was having a good time. We were like, we only live once and only in Belize, so... We were packing up and getting ready to go. This is our turn. As you can see, I'm like, man, I'm the last one to go. I'm not even playing. I'm wondering why my light ain't working. Everybody light on. I feel I'm scared. But still, you got to live once. And this was it. So when we first got into the water, it was freezing, but our tour guide just let us know because it was so hot outside that when we got into the water, it felt like it was 30 degrees, but it was actually 65 degrees to 70 degrees. So if the water drips on you from the ceiling, the tour guide said that that was like a sign from the guys that you were being blessed by them. And that's what the Mayans believed. Also, when we kept saying that the water was cold, it was freezing, they kept saying it was refreshing. That's something you'll hear them say over and over again is that the water is refreshing. They do shine bright like diamonds, but they're not. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there today. <laughs> yep. You guys heard the word Shibalba in the bus, right? Shibalba or yeah. hell or a place of fright. So they were referring to this. If you notice, we came down over 100 steps. And at this point, we're approximately at 200 feet underneath those uh, mountains. So we are going to Shibalba today. So then family, today we went to Shibalba, also known as the underworld or a place of fright. So the tour guide said we're going to hell. The Mayans believed that the caves were considered a sacred space for the ancient gods to be worshipped. So here they would perform human sacrifices and also rituals to the gods. It was considered like the place where you could really connect with them in the underworld. So in this cave, it stretches around nine miles long. And so we were 200 feet underneath the mountains, guys. That's how deep we were. And we had to walk down over 100 steps. So in the caves, there are insect bats and also he mentioned fruit bats, but the insect bats will fly low because our light attracted mosquitoes and that was like their food source. So the deepest part of the cave was 25 deep. And that's when we first started walking to get inside our tubes to swim out. It was 25 deep and then it gets shallow. The deepest point in the cave was where we started. There's like 25 feet deep on the center. Wow. Right here it got a little bit shallow. Oh wow. Coming up you will be seeing or even feeling some water dripping on you. This was considered a holy and sacred water by the Maya, so if it drips on you today. So our tour guide also told us about stalactites and stalagmites. So stalactites grow down from the cave ceilings 
and stalactites grow from the cave floor up. A good way to remember this is stalactites has a C, which stands for, it could be referred to as ceiling, and stalagmites stands for like ground, which can be referred to as, you know, the G in stalagmites. Your guy was also explaining that these caves have not been thoroughly examined. So they're not for sure exactly what can be discovered in these caves or what hasn't been discovered because no one has truly went through it and examined it. You guys familiar with the grinding stone? Yes. The uh, Mayas called it mano, which means hand, and metate, which would be the flat rock at the bottom. The hand part would look something like this. This is not it, this is a river rock would be a little bit thicker and uh, rounder. That's how they would grate their corn, their beans, or their cacao seeds for the chocolate drink, right? Mm -hmm. Someone brought this here. Vamos. To get in contact with the formations, we destroy the growing process. But the other minerals we might have in the palm of our hands without us noticing, that's what we do, right? Take a look at that one. It's facing upwards. Question is, do you guys believe that's a stalagmite? Or do you believe it's a stalactite? These are stalagmites. Ooh. Look at that one. <laughs> You'll be hearing the uh, bats squealing. They actually nest mostly where those formations fell out the ceiling because they feel safe in that area because we're not able to go around at no time, right? So that's where they stay most of the time. Alrighty, so in front of you, there is a formation of a column. The stalactites joining with the stalagmites, right here. And you clearly see it looks like a frozen waterfall. That's what we name it, a frozen waterfall. Frozen. Over there, we do have some pieces of pots. Like the mold part of the pots. And another one here. That is already calcified onto the formation. If you take a look at it, you can clearly see someone tried to remove it there. Just break like a part of it, so they couldn't get it because it's like calcified already. So this should give you evidence it's been there for a couple hundred of years, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Let's come this way. We do have a lot of steps coming up. These are man-made steps. We do this here. So we weren't able to check out the other part of the cave because some formations of stalactites had fell and I was totally okay with that because after I seen those bats, I was a little nervous, <laughs> but this was such a great experience. 10 out of 10, I definitely recommend if you're going to be in Belize to go to Shabalba and you guys don't be like me. Don't let the name scare you because this is such a once in a lifetime experience. Um, the price of this was definitely around $100, but it also comes with like a meal, which is so worth it. It's a good way just to explore, relax, and just learn new things. Okay, you ready? All right. There you go.